Game skip by Ed Lukowicz with Jim Walsh throwing the four stones. My name is Jim Nix and I'm joined here this afternoon with Kaylee McLean. And we look forward to a great game. Both teams play very offensive minded games and we really look forward to that. We're going to fill you in just a little bit on the route the teams took getting here. First of all, hey Kaylee, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, we had a great game this morning with the bronze medal ladies game. Yes, that was a good game. Yeah, just uh, Team Manitoba coming up coming up on top over uh, Team New Brunswick in a game that really really went down to the wire. Down three coming home for New Brunswick, but they did have a few chances in that last end to create a, create a score of three, but didn't happen, so they won that one, and Saskatchewan won the men's bronze medal game as well, kind of handily over Team BC. So we're just going to let you know here, these teams took pretty similar but different routes to the final. Alberta reeled off six straight wins to start the event, kind of dominating the opposition, actually. But then things took a, a bit of a turn for the worse. They lost two in a row, in which they really only scored a single point in each game. Finally, in their second last game, they, they showed signs of getting out of that scoring slump and ended up taking four against this team from Ontario in the seventh end to, to put themselves in a better spot going on. We're just laughing a little bit at the teams having to turn around with their jackets. Um, but then Ontario did, did get a couple and won that game. And, and from there, um, Alberta went on to win their last round robin game fairly handily. Semifinals, they ended up stealing one in the seventh and one in the eighth to beat Saskatchewan. So, so I think they're ready to go. And Ontario is uh, also a team that started the week with five wins of their own before BC stopped them in draw six. And after a win, our own Nova Scotia's team, skipped by Steve Ogden, did manage to beat Ontario seven to one in, in, champ in the championship round action. So good for Augie. Um, and from there, Ontario reeled off a few more victories, including an 8-4 semifinal win over BC. Both, I think, very strong teams. Expect to see competition, solid competition, and a good game. Yes, I would agree. It should be a very good game. Yeah, I think when you see these teams, you'll be having a hard time believing that they are all Masters age. They're all 60 and over, a couple of them uh, well over. So it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. I think you'll see a game that very much mimics what you see at, at Tanker play. Maybe not quite to that level, but really, really close. On the other sheet today, Kaylee, we have who? We have our own team, Nova Scotia, and Mark Cutcliffe playing at home, and she's playing against Saskatchewan's Merle Kopak. Exactly, yeah. Margie, uh, good win last night. We were here and watched that game, or yesterday afternoon, I guess last night was a banquet, and, you know, in a game that she trailed early, but pulled off a three and a four end late, and, and ended up with a fairly solid or fairly convincing win after seven ends of play against the team from New Brunswick. So it's certainly been a great week here, and we're just about ready to get going with this one. The handshakes are done. The teams are going, skips are making their way to the other end of the sheet. And we'll be ready to go just momentarily. Ontario, by virtue of their finish in the, in the uh, round robin competition, has choice of, had choice of rocks and also hammer in this first end. So you'll see uh, the Alberta lead here stepping in here shortly. Got a ridiculously rowdy Alberta squad. There's, they did, you know, yeah. They did quiet down for a little while when the team was, well, shall we say, in a slump. But, uh, <laughs> but, but they've they've broken out and they're ready to go. And I, they might even have, they actually have everybody outnumbered here. Never mind just Ontario. They have as many people as we have from the valley here. So that's a good thing. Anyway, I'm sure they've been here all week. I've seen them countless times and they've had a good time and that's what it's all about. So. We look forward to a great game. We've got a great crowd both upstairs and downstairs, and we're off. And Lukowicz asking for the first shot of the game, and just a tight guard would be good. Yeah, it slides into the forefoot. Bruce Delaney, the skip of Team Ontario, gets on it just a little tiny bit. A little too good to leave, I guess, Kaylee. They're going to make a move on this one. Yeah, I mean, it's the first end. You want to get your feet wet a little. doesn't hurt to keep it open. Yeah, exactly. Up turn hit on its way. We will see a little more directional sweeping with the men's teams than we did with the ladies this morning. We talked about that briefly. Uh, the ladies were doing a little, but hasn't to make a complete commitment, so... Um, you'll see a little more this afternoon, I think. So Ed asking for Manitoba lead Gord Dewar to put this one top eight foot as well. I'm, I'm assuming now that they probably played it there in the last one as well. 
still have this morning's game on your head. You said Manitoba's lead. It's Alberta. Oh, did I? Man, I did that for like half an end this morning. Too many teams. Anyway, we'll get it straight. We understand we have a lot of people watching across the country, and we're all, we're playing. We, we arranged this game to be late in the day just so those in Alberta could get up and watch it. So hopefully there's a bunch of people out there watching it. And we know we got a good crowd from, from in Ontario watching it. We're going to speak with uh, Ontario coach. To a bank. <laughs> Andrew, what? Lyle Anderson. Jeez, I just drew a blank. We had a conversation the other day, and I too many names. So anyway, Lyle's going to have a little chat with us here after the first end and tell us what's going on in Russell, Ontario, just outside of the Ottawa area. and um, Just a good place. I've been there before. I curled there before myself many years ago. And you can see they're working here trying to make this one curl a little bit. And they'll get a little bit of curl. So the action's on already, Kaylee. Yes, it is. And Alberta's just going to hit this one because you can see all of it. Yeah, not much choice here. Without hammer, you have to be a little bit careful early in the game for sure. So the outturn hit now. That's signaling probably what I would think was somewhere around normal weight. That across the chest for most teams is is somewhere around normal, and normal might be a nine or nine and a half second takeout. Don higher, no problem with that. And he will hang around. That's a big deal, actually, hanging around. Forces Ontario to to stay away from coming around that guard again. Yes, they're forced to make a play on it. No turn hit for Ontario second stone, Brian Henderson. And he makes it, he's rolling out. Ed's jumping on it. And he'll get it out. And Lukovic with a straw broom that, or a hair broom that looks kind of like it might have been around for a few years. And just to get that one out the back, and now he'll he'll just take to the offense a little bit here, try to come around that center guard. It's his guard, so it makes sense to come around it. Don Heyer now will be playing the draw. He just played a hit on his first one. Solid player, all solid players out here, obviously, in the championship game. But as we've mentioned before, really, the top eight teams, not much to pick between the top eight teams in this in this men's field. And really good players, great sweepers. I've seen that in the men's and the women's division. The front ends are in great shape and, and are great sweepers. So it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to watch. This one slides to the back. You might see Bruce ignore this one. He's just called the freeze. The intern side, this we talked earlier, the sheets I used to get just a little bit straighter yesterday and you know it's um, still been great, but it's just maybe just a little bit straighter than it had been and you know the guys might have worked on it a little bit overnight to, to get a little bit of that curl back in. It looks like it's gonna be pretty good here today. This one will go to the back. That was sort of plan B. It's, you know, you, you play the come around, but, you know, if it goes to the back, it's not so bad. So if, uh, if you're Alberta, are you hitting that now, or are you just going to play the freeze yourself? Yeah, it's an excellent question. You can you can go either way. It looks like it, Lukovic is going to play the draw. It's, um, yeah, it would be interesting. You know, it's back eight, so you know if you make a play on it, they're probably going to ignore it. So the choice is, do you try to beat them around, or do you just, just go ahead and hit and see what happens? So, look what she's throwing third stones. Actually, that's Jim Walsh holding yes. the broom now, as we said before. Um, and look what she does throw third stones here, and Jim Walsh throws the fourth stone, so just kind of missed that one. Don Heyer working on this one. This is a little heavy, too, so he's probably going to be to the back one anyway. Delaney out a little bit, and he bumps it back. So, a little bad luck there, but just a little bit heavy, so you can't can't expect to uh, to make it if you're going to throw not quite the right weight, but you don't want to be light on that. So Delaney asking for the same shot, or is he just going right around? I think he's going right around, because that looks like a little less ice than he had on the first one. Okay. He 
see the crowd there. Really good crowd downstairs. I was surprised. We just went down to check out pronunciation of a name and could hardly get through. It's Rick Bashan for Team Ontario. Rick and Bruce have played together for a long, long, long time and probably on and off every now and then naturally, but I know I lived in Ottawa in the late 70s and they were together then and this one's over curling a little bit. So Blue Stone, Alberta, still shot rock. They have to be a little careful here. You don't want to do something that would would bring both those red stones, the red Alberta counters, into play. Or the red Ontario counters into play. Jim Walsh just adjusting the ice slightly. Way. Sweeper's not doing much with this, so the weight must be close. Certainly not light, at least. It's on higher. You can tell with the angle here, trying to work this rock over a little bit. And it's fine. It's just a little deep, but pretty much takes the red counters out of play, which was important for Alberta in that situation. So nice aggressive first end, not something we see all the time, Kaylee, certainly in, in play around here in Nova Scotia. A lot of teams will take that first end a little bit safer, if you want to use that term. Yes, and even the second end sometimes. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Eight in game, though. We're pretty short games. You don't want to be throwing too many ends away, that's for sure. And a wealth of experience out here with these teams, so nerves shouldn't be much of an issue. They've been here now for 11 games. So the ice conditions should be pretty, pretty should, should be pretty comfortable with them and ready to go right off the bat. Bashan a little tight and light on this one. This won't help a whole lot. And we'll open the door for Alberta. That's a, that's a big miss by Rick. It's, it does give Alberta a chance to duck around that guard and sit three and more importantly, sit one or two in very good positions. So the key to this one will be keep it above the T line. Yes. And looking it over. It never looks too stressed out there. Even the other day when they were struggling a little bit, I look over and really just look like, well, we're just out here curling a friend friendly game. Well, if you look at his resume, I don't think he has a whole lot to be stressed about. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So Jim Walsh now played in the intern. Intern come around. He can make a good one here. He's going to put a lot of pressure on Team Ontario right off the bat here in the first end. Line looks pretty good. Starting to go a little harder on the inside sweeper. Might be it by the guard, and it does, no. and now they'll go hard to finish it. That's a terrific shot for the first end. Great shot. If you wanted to be 100% perfect, you'd be about one foot shorter, but I think that's pretty darn good. I think that is a more than acceptable shot. So now Delaney looking to just open up the front. Probably the best call here, but I'll tell you, it's, um, you know, even if he makes this, Alberta just has to make, basically throw the same shot, just five, six feet lighter, and gonna be really tough for Ontario to score here in the first end. Bruce Delaney in the hack for Ontario. Rick Bichon with the broom hold. See, Bruce will have a really solid delivery here. He's always had, had a nice, solid, compact delivery. With a little extra weight on this one, probably, a little more than maybe what he normally would throw. Curling up pretty good, and we look at it. So it does the job for sure. Yep. Opens things up for his last one. Yep. 
So a better situation for Ontario, but I'll tell you, I still like Alberta's chances in this end. If, if they can make a decent guard here, and they might try to bite the top of the eight foot with this. Um, I think this is one you said, as you said this morning, Kaylee, this one line is probably more important than, than anything on this one. Oh, yes. Anything on that center line, as long as it's in play, and uh, somewhere towards the top half of the house, should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think anywhere from, yeah, you're, you're right. Anything top 8 foot, top 12, full 12, even just slightly short of the rings would be pretty good. They should have a pretty good idea on this one. As long as Jim gets it on the stick, he should be really close. Basically had the identical shot, as we said, to his first one, just, just a touch lighter. And they swept his first one for a weight, so he probably doesn't need to take a whole lot off of it. Yeah, you're right. So this looks pretty good coming in here. A little hard to see that center line there, a little bit of glare coming off it, but... This is looking pretty darn good. Yeah. It's a perfect shot. So Bruce Delaney now forced with the draw against three in the first end. Probably looking to get number two. I'd be pretty happy with number two right now. Just a draw at full four foot. Pretty near impossible to get shot. I think you'd have to throw a weight that you don't really want to throw to try to score. So giving up one here, he wouldn't be too unhappy with. Preferably just one, though, I would think. It's a good day to be blue on sheet two. Yes. Mark just made a nice hit for that to happen. We'll let you know at the end of the end what happened over there. So Rick Bichon with the broom hold. Bruce Delaney with the final stone in the first day. And this would be a much more challenging shot in a, a club curling or somewhere where you haven't had practice and played a lot of games. And on ice, it's as good as this because this ice has just been spectacular for weight and curl all week long. Sweepers are just kind of standing back a little bit. I don't think it looks heavy, but maybe a little bit. This one's sliding on. Not going to get to the shot stone for sure. Might not get to the second shot stone. And a big steal of two here in the first end for Alberta in our gold medal game at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters. Alberta leading Ontario 2-0 after one end. So we're going to have a little chat here with Lyle Anderson, of the coach of Team Ontario. We spoke with Lyle the other day, and he told us all about the Navy Club, and he's going to fill us in a little bit what's going on in Ontario while we're playing this game. Hey, Lyle, how you doing? Well, I'm doing great. I uh, just want to thank you very much for taking the time to let me speak a little bit today about, uh, first of all, the hospitality given here from the uh, Nova Scotia people in these communities. Speaks for itself. It's just outstanding. Yeah, so, it's been a pretty good week then. It's been an absolutely fantastic week in, in all aspects, and we're just, we're really proud to be here, and we, you know, the outcome of the game will, It'll be just fine whichever way it goes, but it's, it's certainly both teams have earned this spot today. So. Yeah, two great teams actually at the start of the week, two teams that you yeah, a lot of people would have picked to be playing in this game. The, uh, the special uh, moment that you've given me today is, uh, is for me to pay a, a little hello to the Russell Curling Club, which is where Rick Rashan and, uh, and Dave Henderson play, or Dave uh, Stanley play out of. Because uh, I was informed uh, recently, as this morning, by some of the players here that uh, the Russell Curling Club are piping in the pipers. <laughs> wow, pipers. Yeah. Are, yeah. At the uh, Russell Curling Club today. And uh, I guess they've opened the curling club up, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's a special moment. So for the Russell Curling Club, hi, guys. Uh, we're doing our best here. We've had a great week. And, you know, uh, special thanks also to... Uh, to the to the team here itself for for putting us where we are today uh but i believe uh you've got a gentleman sitting there in the crowd somewhere by the name of brian cochran and maybe his team members just winning the seniors canadian championship so hi brian how are you doing and take care we're going to see you soon yeah congratulations to brian we watched that game uh, uh did that game last week actually so it was uh yeah it was pretty cool yeah and uh so i don't take all of your time here <laughs> I know the game's on, so I would just like to uh, take about two minutes, if you don't mind, to sure. express something that's a very, very serious concern for all Masters Curling and its sponsorship. Uh, as you well know, uh, 
the Masters, uh, we have to pretty well sponsor ourselves and pay our own way. So yeah. hopefully the Canadian Curling Association or other people in the future can help out and keep us going. So. Yeah, well, let's hope, obviously, by the look of what we see here today with the number of teams from across the country. And as you say, where teams that are paying their own way to get here, it's it's pretty special and means a lot to a lot of players. So, yep. yeah, let, let's hope that they find a way to provide at least some funding for this event and, and keep it going. Well, we, we did receive a... Uh uh, you know some some funding uh, to get us here but not near enough yeah. so uh, this is where the special tribute to our corporate sponsor here today is Willis College Canada cybersecurity Sophos people made this happen for us well that's great and, and made the week just an amazing week because uh, you know most of these people are retired and ta da ta da ta da but uh, Rima Ashcroft was was the uh, bargaining factor behind that whole instrumental yeah. process so thank you very much well, that's terrific that's terrific so anything else for going on in Wessel that we need to know about well i so, heard they just had uh, i don't know if they got the snow out there but i heard there was 16 <laughs> centimeters oh really <laughs> oh my goodness in ottawa but i think yeah. the sun's coming through behind it with the winter spring hopefully well upon us yeah we're all ready for spring we usually this part of the country this part of the valley usually is is solidly into spring by now with most golf courses being open and yeah. whatnot but they're a little late for uh for the valley area for sure yeah but uh, thanks a lot again buddy oh really you're welcome it. no problem at all thank Bye. you Lyle anderson coach of team ontario nice chatting with lyle again we spoke with him a couple days ago during the ontario probably the ontario nova scotia game maybe it was if it was, we would have had to speak early in that one. That was a rough day for Team Ontario, but they've, uh, they're have they here, so all kudos to them. So we got a bit of a mess going on. Kaylee, fill us in. I have been, haven't been looking at any of it. I was I was kind of half watching, so I was still listening to what Lyle was saying. So it, it looks like Ontario's got them into a little bit of trouble, and I'm not quite sure how it happened. Okay, let's start from here then. So Ontario facing three Alberta counters. Already down 2 nothing. Not any need to panic. Eight in game. We have seven ends to go. And obviously a great curling team. So there won't be a lot of panic on the part of the Bruce Delaney's and squad. He'll just take his time. Try to get it to somewhere along the way. And, rolls and you can see that was a perfect roll. Too. Yeah, exactly. Perfect roll. And what happened in the uh, Nova Scotia game on sheet two? They actually stole one in that first end. So they've got a one nothing lead on uh, Merle Kopak of Saskatchewan. Well, that's a good start for Margie Cutcliffe and her squad. It, uh, you know, probably both teams pretty happy with that first end then, because I think that that Kopak might have been looking at five or six or something when. Yeah, I think it was maybe four or five. Four or five, was, yeah. A it lot was a of few. Them. Yeah, yeah. We're not known to be blueberry country, but she was looking like blueberry country for a little while over there. So we got an inter draw coming here for Team Alberta. A little draw tap maybe. Starting to curl a little bit. Jim Walsh handling the sweeping here. They'll move things around a little bit. And we'll see. Well, it's pretty uh, pretty close together, but probably fairly difficult to to remove more than uh, one. Say so you could remove one and change the scenery on at least one other one. Yeah, that would be good. And. As we say, you'll be surprised to see what happens at the end here with that red one behind the corner guard. That may just come into into play as we move through the through this end. Ah, good shot. Difficult yeah, to he, remove. As maybe? I say, he rolled in a spot that I think is. From what I can tell, it looks like it's inevitable to jam with. Yeah, you know, he, he might be able to pick it out, but it's, uh, yeah, I'd probably get it out the side there. But if it does, and if he rolls out, all of a sudden Ontario makes one double, and they're sitting two both behind guards. It can change in a hurry here in the curling game. Yes, they can. you got to hang in. Some days it just aren't, things aren't going your way, and it doesn't feel like you're ever going to get in it. But if you can hang in long enough not play yourself out of the game you can get right back in it sometimes yeah sometimes it's just a matter of getting out of your own head for a second yeah good point yep Ed Lukowicz pretty darn steady for 70 something years old or maybe just 70 even anyway 
steady all the same. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So move one blue one and did remove a red, which is good for Alberta and rolled around. He's not bad, didn't turn out too bad. Pretty good shot there for Alberta. Bruce Delaney. Looking okay, for the hit and roll behind cover again. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Bashanza Tucker. Talked about Tuckers this morning. We have a half a dozen or so in this event. And I said before, I'm amazed that guys can get into that position, slide all the way down the sheet at their their age. Because I can't do it at my age. And well, I'm surprised I'm, when the 20-year-olds can do it. It's, yeah. I always look at it and go, okay, you still going to be curling when you're 60? Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, it's interesting. I don't know how the body works sometimes. I know when I first started curling, I was a tuck delivery, and I never had a knee problem until all of a sudden I figured, okay, I better, I better change. Everybody told me I better change, and I did, and had some pretty tough issues for a few years, but... But anyway, I'm sure that's not the norm, and I'm sure that it's much better to, to slide out there flat-footed and not be in the in that tuck position. No, nope, it, it's coming down to discuss something with uh, Jim. Yeah, having a little chat here about where they want to roll. and No, nope, now it's a full team discussion. Yeah. Don Heyer joining in on the fun. I know, and, and I promised Don's wife I wouldn't make any higher jokes. <laughs> So we have to be careful until she's at least has to go to the washroom or something. Then we can pull them all out. <laughs> I just figured there were some really good ones in there that we could figure out. But so far, we're going to resist. So the guys have decided what they're playing here. We don't know, but they are playing the hit. We know that. We do know that they're going to play the hit. It's just a matter of which way they want to roll with this. And you can probably... Uh, Probably could consider either way, actually. It's There's guards in both directions. Yeah, it's good. interesting. I'm not really sure which way is the better way to roll. It's an honest way. I think they're looking for the inside roll based on this yeah. directional sweeping. Yeah, I would think yeah. you're right. Switch sweepers. <laughs> Well, they managed a directional sweeper right to a nose hit, so that's what they'll have to make do with, and that's fine. <coughs> Delaney now trying to figure out how best to remove those rocks. Talked about maybe even doing something with his front one, maybe bump it in, maybe play a little bit of a run back, probably with relatively soft weight if he does. See Rick's sliding device there on his left side. He's got a straw broom that actually has a Stainless steel slider taped, I think stainless steel slider taped to the broom and he will slide on that device. That's pretty cool. I'm surprised he's not burning the rock in, in his slide. They're yeah, very close together. I don't know what the rule is there actually as far as that. I don't know if you actually, if it's okay to touch or not. I often wonder that sometimes with tuck delivers. So, no, I don't know that that was the greatest result, but it did open it up here for Ontario. and. Important for Ontario to be able to score here. They need to make sure that they don't they don't play themselves into a position where they end up giving up another point in the third in the second end here. So Jim Walsh now fourth stone thrower for Alberta makes his way down to the other end. I was just figuring out what they're going to use here. and Who gets which, which yep, broom? Exactly, yeah. Let's maybe switch, maybe not. No, <laughs> going to stay with what they got. It's all a matter of what turn you're throwing. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is a little tap maybe for Alberta. I think so. Yeah, it's not, not a rock that you would normally throw a guard on for sure. Not only that, they could actually make the double and put you in trouble if you do that. So I'm thinking this is some sort of a little tap or split or straight come around even. Don Heyer working to hold it straight. Definitely gonna be on the other one, I think. I or think you're right. Okay. So the Rocks are in a position where Ontario could definitely make a double I don't think they can get all three, but they could make a double and sit 
probably number two and number three. That would be one option. What else do we see here, Kaylee? Right now, we don't see anything. So <laughs> right there we right go. now, I see Delaney and Bashan's yeah. jackets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they look good. I mean, you could just try the hit and roll, but that's that's tough because you've got to squeak by that rock near the center line to do that. And and you end up in a position that where they can just run it. Yeah, it's so short, right? Yes. It's not even that it's a you know a six foot run back. You're actually going to give it's them a, a two inch run back. Yeah, so it's. But anyway, that's appears that's what Bruce is going to play. If he could ever hit it thin enough, and maybe he can, where he would roll over, you know, all the way over maybe to the edge of the eight foot would be pretty good. I mean, if you just end up throwing hack weight or a, a lighter hit weight at it, you're probably able to do that without. Yeah, exactly. Too right much damage. So Bruce Delaney, Ottawa, Ontario. Good throw by Delaney. Starting to move a little bit. Have to be careful here not to let it hit that guard or hit the high blue one, I guess I should say. Ooh. Sure enough, ticks it. So. And that actually, I think that was partially a directional sweeping error because they were sweeping that for curl at the beginning. Yeah, make it curl, yeah. Yeah. Big miss for the Ontario squad. Opportunity there to maybe at least give yourself an easier shot in your last one. Now you're looking at very, very difficult shot. Alberta puts this rock right. Oh, they're going to go right in. I, I have noticed Ontario or Alberta rather doesn't fool around with a whole lot of high guards. Sometimes they they just keep pounding them in there. And so if you can make a double or triple or something, you might score multiple points. But generally, throw it in and safety in numbers, I guess. I just see the second end in the women's final finished, and Saskatchewan got one with Hammer. Um, Merle Kopak wasn't looking like she was in a position to score the deuce, so she just chose to throw the last one away. And oh yeah, okay. take her one. There was there was a, a re, uh, sorry a blue wall kind of behind her shot rock that wasn't worth messing with. Okay. So a one one tie in the women's gold medal game here at the Wolfville Curling Club, Kings County, Nova Scotia. The Canadian Masters Curling Championships. So Alberta, a tight guard, might might have set up a double for one. It's the only thing I didn't like about the call, but maybe not also. If your shooter rolls too far one way or the other, you're giving yeah. up a steal of one, maybe two. Yeah. I guess no matter what you did there, if, if Ontario did make a double, you would have been looking at, or they would have been in a position maybe to score. So that might be as good as any, actually. Well, and I don't think, I don't think Ed has any issue with Ontario scoring a single in the second end. Oh, no, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Forcing the Ontario to one here even would be, would be very much a success for Team Alberta. And as it is, I think Bruce Delaney has to make a double, and I don't know... If he'll get shot rock if he makes this double, to be honest, it is it is close. Our overhead camera doesn't quite give us a big enough big enough view there, just because of whatever, the height of it or whatever the, whatever the issue is there. But we do the best we can. If we're close enough to the center, we'll see it. But this one is um, this one's going to be an interesting shot. I, like I say, I'm not sure he can make the double and get shot rock, but he doesn't have much choice but to play it, to be honest. There's not really a whole heck of a lot else. There's no draw at all. Like no. and he's covered. They got the pin covered. As I say, that uh, Alberta stone is very much on our Kings County Masters logo. Yeah. So the out turn on its way for Delaney. And you know what, Kaylee? He might have been playing a different shot here. That shot? Exactly. Yeah. That's a. That was a great effort, and you see what he was doing there. We actually missed yes. that call and trying to hit that really thin, wiggle his way through and, and bump Pop that one back. through the hole and yeah. push it back, and he only had to push that back another inch or so. Oh, absolutely. Heck of a try for Bruce Delaney for Ontario. That's the good news. The bad news is that Alberta still did score one, though, so Alberta now moves ahead three to nothing. 
over the team from Ontario. After two ends of play here at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters, we do want to let you know that Scotia Gold Cooperative Limited is today's feature sponsor for the 2016 Canadian Masters Curling Championships. The Valley, well known for the apple blossom festivals and apples and trees and all that kind of stuff. Have they have grown, apples have grown in the Annapolis Valley since the first apple trees were planted by Acadian settlers back 400 years ago. Today, Scotia Gold Cooperative produces more than half the apples grown in Atlantic Canada with over 20 varieties of apples being produced for our customers. This season, you're looking for the newest variety, Sweet Tango and Sonia, along with our outstanding Honeycrisp brand. Enjoy an apple today. As they say, it keeps the doctor away and keeps the Annapolis Valley busy. To say, it keeps the Annapolis Valley in business. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. i got to tell you, too, for any of you out there, it's, uh, if you haven't been to the Apple Blossom Festival, you should really think about taking it up. It's They have everything. They have fireworks. They have kids' playgrounds. They have concerts. They have a big parade. They have a kids' parade. They have... You know, obviously pageants and everything. It is a terrific four or five days down here. Oh, yes, it is very busy. I actually, I grew up in Halifax and went to my first Apple Blossom last spring, and it was quite the experience. Yeah, it's a, they get a lot of people. It's, um, you know, hopefully it's something they keep on for many years to come because it's certainly a, a, tr a tradition that shouldn't die and a very, very big event for the Kings County area here in the Annapolis Valley. So Alberta throws one in, Ontario throws up the corner guard. And Alberta throws another one in. Pretty standard strategy here for these teams. Slukovic holds the broom and taps the top of the eight foot. Left-hander Gord Dewar, left-handers always mess me up. I get the wrong turns from them all the time. You got any left-handers in your team? No, No. Nope. But, but, but my family is all left-handers. Except for oh, me. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. And my brother. Just my wow. parents. Just your parents? Yep. Well, that's odd. I'll have a discussion with Stuart and Carol about that. See what really happened. Uh, maybe that's the way it goes with left-handed, right-handed people. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and my boyfriend, it, it, my boyfriend is right-handed, but Carol's left-handed. So we did the family spiel at Dartmouth uh, Boxing Day this year. And apparently I was the anomaly that threw off my father who was skipping. Wow. You right-handers are messing me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's too funny. It's... uh. Actually, it's weird. I watched a little bit of spring training baseball this year, which I don't usually do, and I saw that one guy pitching for the Blue Jays one day, and he, he threw with both hands. It was like, you know, depending on the batter, he picked what hand he wanted to throw it. I didn't think anybody did that. Anyway, that was pretty neat. So Ontario now looking to come around. I think nope, a just throwing a would guard. confuse that poor pitcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Playing a freeze, I guess. I thought he was going to be coming around something to throw in a corner. Playing a little freeze tap shot. Gonna need to make something happen here soon, Ontario. It's, you know, it's still as we said, it's still pretty early. We're only two ends in, but at the same time, it's only an eight end game. Yeah, you got to make your moves when you can. Yeah, you give up another point or two here, and it's it's going to be a challenge getting back in it. And here, um, it's called for the double, the peel, and the one in the twelve foot. Yeah, yeah. Looks pretty good if it holds on, gets the and one. There you go. What a shot. And as Jim pointed out earlier, the Alberta fans are here in full force. Yeah, they are, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're here and they're going to let us know too. So, because um, the first couple games I did this week, I arrived here Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, and that was right about when the Alberta team kind of hit their little patch of a couple games that were a little bit rough. So they poor, poor ladies were here, but they couldn't, wasn't much to cheer about. So I'm sure they got her back on track, and it's good to see, too. We like to have a little bit of excitement in a curling game, for sure, and in the crowd. Some friendly rivalries in the crowd. Well, exactly, hard. yeah, for sure. Brian Henderson now. The run back for Ontario gets rid of a couple. Beautiful shot. Good shot, Brian. So I've got a lot going this end, but it's still a little bit early in the end. A 
Alberta now will play the, the hit and roll to the open side, or not the open side, I guess the right hand side as we look at it, just to avoid the jam. Don Heyer. Looks pretty solid here, and will he stay? And he stays even, wow, I think. No, he's going out. Oh, is he out? Yeah, there's, some, there's quite a bit of white there. Yeah. Okay, so he removed it, though, with a 3 nothing lead. That's the first the first part of the plan, staying to be the second part. That's a hard one, too, going across the face to hit and stay, but good throw. So Delaney now really thinking that maybe he's got to go to a freeze game. Some guys might not do this here. Some guys might throw up a corner guard or two. Let Alberta chase it a little bit because they certainly will. You can be pretty sure that they won't leave those corner guards up. And then, um, you know, maybe play this a little bit later in the end. Of course, there's always the danger you don't get to play this, and that's the that's the guessing part of the game that you got to try to figure out what the other guy will do. Or girl. And he just comes up Not a little Not going to matter because you're going to have the guard anyway. So not a good shot there for Henderson because now Alberta might choose to leave that and come right around it. No. No, he doesn't like it. Yeah. I thought they might just decide to just stay aggressive and go right around it. but The only problem with the come around is if you ever end up tucked behind it, you're leaving run backs. Yeah. Oh, I agree. So the upturn hit for Lukowicz. Better go pretty hard here. They do. Sweep it off to the corner. Try to get it right out of play. And close. That a good shot. The Alliance proud to be the official broadcaster for this 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters Curling Champs Championships here at the Wolfville Curling Club and over at the Gloose Cap Curling Club in Kentville. In beautiful Kings County, Nova Scotia, where Bell Alliance, there's more to love with fiber op. That line is covered, I think, probably, oh, I don't know, 60 games of curling or something here in the last two weeks because there was, I know Scott Squires did 21 games in Digby last week, and I did nine games in Digby last week, so, and then all the games here this week, so, and they're doing two every draw. So, I don't know, it has to be pretty close to 50 games of curling. So, we, we appreciate the support in the curling community of Bell Line and TV1 and the work that they do in, in helping promote all community sports. Well, and they were doing our uh, Scotties and Tankard Provincials this year as well. Yeah. There's a good shot, a little come around to the back. I'm not sure if that was a call, but we've seen that call a lot in curling in the last few years, so may well have been. Yeah, and the guys here, uh, Scott and Chuck, are two production guys that have done an amazing job here and then last week as well. Uh, I think they're gonna get a few hours off after this. But not many, because tomorrow they're setting up for the Canadian Masters Badminton Championships in Halifax. So those guys, they just don't get any time off. Like, it's pretty amazing to me. Well, we do this kind of because we choose. I like to do it because it's fun, and I enjoy it. And, and I like to watch curling, obviously, so that's all good. But those guys, those guys don't get the luxury. I can go home, say, that's it, I'm done for a couple of weeks. Those guys are like, well, I'm going to go home. I'm going to be done for six hours, and then pick up the next event. So kudos to them. Look at which with the outturn draw here, a little draw tap shot. Try to go right around and to that back red, and I think he's going to make this. A little bit of help on the sweeping. Wow, that is a great shot. That's a terrific shot. And he was a little close to that rock on the button there. Oh, for sure. Ed Lukowicz. Just thinking this is like a back to the future, a blast from the past, or something like that. But Lukowicz with a great shot there. That was a terrific effort. I don't know, whatever it was. It was vintage Ed Lukovic. That's yeah. what you're trying to say. Yeah. yeah it looked like Lukovic of old anyway on that one. That was a great shot. So Bashan now. Ontario will look to play probably a similar shot. Working hard, trying to make something out of nothing here. Bruce Delaney and his team from Ontario. There's Hasn't got much to work with, but he's going to try to use what he has. And this looks like a freeze. That looks good. Looks great. Lock it on. Very nice. Couldn't uh, have put that in a better shot. spot. Oh, very good shot. 
looked pretty much like the Denmark Swede against Can Swede or Denmark game freeze against Canada in the gold medal game today. That yeah, I don't know if um, Jim Walsh is going to be able to do the 90 degree angle. No, the good news is of this yeah. rock. Good news is this one is just offset by about an inch, so it will go out a little easier. You can hit this one three quarters or half and probably get it out. Had it curled another inch, it wasn't going anywhere. I can tell you that. Third end action here at the gold medal game in the 2016 Canadian Masters. Big crowd, big crowd here today. Really big crowd actually up here. And as we see in the cameras, big crowd downstairs. That's awesome to see. And this one's on its way. I don't think I've ever seen this many people in the Wolfville Curling Center before. I'm not sure I've seen this many people in most curling clubs before. So Jim Walsh has it on its way, and I think he's going to be okay. Everybody's pretty casual. Oh, oh! So nice shot, but there's a, there's the shot that Rick Bashan made, finally uh, paying some dividends for Team Ontario. And all of a sudden, they are in a position to to score a couple. Bruce has to roll this to a good place though, because if he just stays right there, it's a fairly easy double. And it's a tough roll because it's you know it's, there's not a lot of room to work with. Yeah, it's not easy, but. At this point, I do think the hit on that one is the call. And I think as, as was just shown, I think he got to roll to the right of our screen because rolling to the left will jam on his own rock. Not, you're exactly right, Kaylee. Yeah, there is no roll really to the open side, if you will. You pretty much do have to, to come to the right. If you're playing the hit, he might be just playing the corner freeze on the blue one or direct freeze even on the blue one. He might leave the back one mostly exposed. That would be a good shot, actually. There would be nothing wrong with that. Again, with Alberta having a 3 nothing lead, you don't really have to worry about them opting to play a, some kind of a guard or something and maybe making it very difficult for you to score. They're going to remove something. So the trick here is to leave a difficult removal for them. Maybe a shot that still gives you the possibility of a 3 if they ever tick on, tick on a rock in front at the top of the 8 foot or top of the 4 foot, wherever it is. So Bashan just tightening up the ice a little bit. We'll see when he comes out exactly how hard he's actually throwing this. He's got a takeout. He's definitely throwing a hit. But it's it's not a lot of weight. It nope. looks like it's about hack weight. Just trying to move it over a little bit. Brian Henderson working hard on the directional sweeping, gunning it over there, and he yeah, did. He got it. He's okay. Didn't I, quite I don't roll as much as I think he wanted to. Yeah, you know, maybe they just didn't want to take that much of a risk and say, well, guys, if we can put it here and hope they don't make the double because he, you're he, right, they did sweep that to make a curl and didn't really seem to be trying all that hard to roll to the right-hand side as we look at it on the screen here. So Jim Walsh with a double opportunity here to, to force Ontario to take one, which would be, would be really, really big for the Alberta squad. But you need to make one go away for sure. Got to watch for the jam possibility on this one, though. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, I, I think you'd, you'd have to be pretty unlucky. You'd have to be hitting it really thin, but but it's definitely there. I need to get it out. Hey, he does, he far does. enough. Yep. And uh, over on the women's game, Nova Scotia just gave up a steal of one to Saskatchewan, so they're down one with Hammer playing the fourth end. Yeah. So a little bit of work to do for Mark Cutcliffe and her squad. Well, that was a good shot there. If that rock rolls even six inches less, then Ontario has a very simple hit and stick for two. Now they have to play the double for two. And not an easy double. It's, no, it's basically about eight feet apart. As I say, there's quite a bit of separation between those two blue stones. Yeah, a lot of separation. And I don't think he, I think he can get one without making the double. But certainly if he makes this, it'll give the gang and Russell something to cheer about and better make their day a little better. So far, it's been a little tough. Bruce Delaney is certainly capable of making these shots and has made a lot of them in his career, no question. So we'll see how this goes. 
probably somewhere around just a control kind of weight. You don't want to overthrow this one and roll out. You got to make sure you at least hit it. Taking a little extra ice, so oh, still a little extra ice. He's throwing like a finesse double here. Not going to throw this one real hard. And that'll work. It's just you need a little bit of uh, action off that back one. Bruce Delaney. Sweepers are ready. Got to get ready to go here. Trying to get it to curl a little bit. Or Dewar, will he get it there? And it's close, really close, and, and he's going to jam oh, it. That was an unfortunate jam. Really unfortunate for Team Ontario. And Alberta picks up a steal of one, moves ahead 4 nothing after three ends of this championship game, the gold medal game at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters Championship. Certainly not what we would have expected. We really would have figured this game would probably be a one-point affair after two or three ends for sure. But it's not. Alberta playing very, very well. Ontario's just a little off right now. Need to kind of figure it out. Come back and probably two this end is a big deal, I think, Kaylee. Oh, yes. I, definitely the deuce would help their confidence and bring things up for the fourth end break. Yeah. No, you know, you only have five ends to go. See, so when you start to kind of do the math on working through those ends... You you're pretty much need to score two here. Scoring one would make it pretty tough. You gotta, you'd have to steal a lot of ends and, or steal a big end, and that's not likely to happen either. So, Alberta, total control at this point with a 4 nothing lead. And with that, they're going to play the scoreboard and come in again. Yep. Oh, yeah, for sure. Lee Gordewer, lefty lefty Gordewer, asking to be thrown one, asking to throw one into the top of the the eight foot area. I take a second to congratulate our other Nova Scotia team, the men's team from Nova Scotia, who started a little rough in this event. They were at three and three when they moved to the championship round and really had to win out to have a chance of making the playoffs, and they darn near did it. They won three of the four games, including a seven one win over this team from Ontario, and. They lost on an extra end to Eugene Ritzik of Saskatchewan the other night, and that was just enough to, to eliminate them from the playoffs. But a great effort by Steve Ogden and the boys, Steve, Brad Meisner, Peter Neely, James Barr, and super spare Peter Millen as James Barr couldn't play the first half of the week. He had a bad knee, and Peter stepped in and did a great job for Steve Ogden and the boys. So kudos to them. So the corner guard goes up for Ontario. BC, or BC, Alberta will throw the same shot again. Again, top eight foot will be fine. In front of the other stone. <laughs> Busy spot here today. Oh, with the home team in the women's game, I think it makes it that much busier. Oh, yeah, for sure. It makes it busier and more exciting and all sorts of things. So, yeah, so it was great to see Margie make it through that game. So Delaney now, I'm guessing another corner guard. I think so. This time the intern corner guard. As they're working hard, need to get it over. Delaney takes over and slides it to the Wolfville Curling Center logo. Yeah, Good gives throw. the sweeper a little break. Sweepers, I should say, a little break. That's right. Somebody decided to air the place out a little bit, Kaylee. And I, I just got that chill a second ago. I wondered yeah. if the door was wide open well, downstairs. I think something's <laughs> open. It's dropped from about... I don't know, 15 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius in a boat. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Don Heyer being asked to remove one of these corner guards now for Alberta. And will he get Maybe both? both. And he does. does. Don Heyer's on fire. It's amazing. Just uh, the shots this guy's making today. So that was a good rock. Does leave the guard, though. He, no choice on that. He couldn't. Yeah. I don't think it was possible to get both corner guards and not leave a guard so no, I think the only way to not leave the guard was just to pick one of them that's right yeah 
So Delaney with a little something to work with, but man, these Alberta guys are tough today. There's not leaving a whole lot for this Ontario squad to work with. I like the imagination factor though. I like the shots that Ontario played last gen, and I like uh, I like this shot here. Second stone, Brian Henderson with the draw. Here they come with the directional sweeping. Yeah, they're going to have to go hard on this. To do. Yep. See Rick Bichon drop off. He's in the inside sweeper. He doesn't really want anything to do with this one. It is curling pretty good. Yeah. Bruce comes up to help uh, Dave Stanley on the sweep on that one, and it did finish very nicely. Yeah, well done. It's partially open, but the way it was coming down, it looked like it was going to be wide open. Yeah, nice shot for Bryant. Nice sweeping by the other guys. See there, it is definitely half open, but you know you. Just talking a little bit here, just making sure everybody's sure on the weight. Don Hart, in turn. to help it curl. <laughs> Just picks it out. Nice shot. Very nice. Alberta's saying you basically have to make better shots than that or you weren't, they're not going to be good enough. So Ontario has to make this one that much better. Have to get it right behind that guard. Just playing the come around, and the sweepers aren't touching this one. Yeah, this nope. one's still staying out there. They're trying. A little closer to that guard. Should be able to get this one behind it, I think. Just a matter of you care if you shot rock or second shot, even. Nice well, second shot, maybe, but that's yeah. about it. Second shot in the back of the eight foot. Actually, almost back 12. Yeah. See, it is behind the guard, but it's. Uh, it might not end up being too much of a help. It'll be interesting to see what Alberta does here. Is he peeling the guard? Yes, he is. The guard's not really hurting him right now. I'm not sure I agree with that call. Well, this is always tough. You're up for nothing, and you're kind of like, well, what do we do here? Like. Peeling the guard sounds like, you know, the the right thing to do in some ways, but you peel the guard, they make a double, and all of a sudden they might get two. Right now, play a come around, make a decent shot. They're going to have a hard time doing much. So we'll see what they decided to do here. Looks like a draw shot of some sort, so basically the same shot that Ontario played a couple times. Yes, uh, that would have been my original instinct, would be to follow Ontario down, and if you're heavy, you bump them back a bit. Yeah. And you're still one, two, and maybe three. So a little heavy, didn't really do what they wanted to do there. That probably would have been okay weight on its own, but they had the uh, directional sweeping the whole way down the sheet, with, which uh, extended its moving distance a little bit. Yeah. You kind of think you still play the same shot, don't you, Kurt? Kim? I do. I know there's a Nice looking blue one there though, so 
I mean, even in really your draw to the forefoot, if you don't want to be back as deep as you were on the first one there. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like we said last end that Ontario needed to score the last end, and they absolutely have to score this end. So maybe you, maybe you got to back up a little bit and say, well, let's try to hit this, roll behind. We sit, we'll sit, we sit number three and four, maybe not one or two, but um, at least we can get to the shot stone and if we can make something else happen, perhaps bring those into play. Should be a pretty good shot. Might roll a little too roll far. A little too far, yep. So Jim's gonna get Ed to hit this one. So Ed Lukowicz playing an outturn hit. Ontario Stone in the 12 foot. Working on the curl. Now try to hold it a little bit straight. Good shot. Look at that roll. Alberta Wonderful playing shot. very, very well today. Ontario in desperate need of a, something good to happen here. Some Somebody to make a really good shot. This could be it. Rick Pichon with a chance to hit and roll behind the guard. And if you do, you may well set up a possible two. Just got it on the way. They might have just set it out of here, but... It's got much handle, sweepers indicating. Will he make the roll? And it's going to roll a little far. tiny bit too far. So Ontario is still struggling to make something really good here. And look which team, look which Walsh now will talk about what they're going to do. And I suspect they'll hit that one he just threw and probably see all the red ones gone in a minute. It's not that they haven't had opportunities. You know, Alberta's left a few rocks around, and Ontario certainly, with a good shot here or there, could 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 have changed things around a little bit. They just haven't done that yet. Interesting when you look at the bios for these teams, and I don't know if Jim just didn't provide anything or if he actually has no experience beyond, you know, beyond Alberta. But you know, you've got Ed Lukowicz playing with you. He's throwing third, and you're throwing skip. I got to be a little intimidating. I'm sure this team's been together for a little while, and he's he must be used to it by now because he's definitely not letting it intimidate him today. Not a bit, no. And there Another go great all shot the there. Yep. And the guys did play at the seniors last week too together and probably didn't go quite as good as they would have liked, but that was okay because they were really kind of focused on this event. So a good shot by Jim Walsh. Bruce Delaney now will go to the outturn draw, try to get one around that high blue one there and get it buried and try to find a way to get a couple points. They just wanted to do the drive from Digby to Kentville, see the scenery. <coughs> yeah. The women's game's in its fourth end break, and I I didn't see the end result, but Mark, yeah, okay, Nova Scotia got their one, so it's tied at the break. Nova Scotia wasn't looking too pretty in that end. Okay. And we have a timeout on our sheet. No, I know that end looked a little bit rocky there for a little while, and then Margie made her last hit and stick for one. So timeout Ontario. You guys are thinking that we better get get going here. We better make sure we play the right shot. Rick may be thinking the intern's a better option. I'm not sure. We've seen the rocks curl on this intern for sure. Um, you know, you do have the back one. If you actually came to that back one and just flopped a little bit, that would work as well. 
but you got to decide. I think it's going to be a. You're only going to play one shot, whichever it is. And Just saw during this time out the Al a couple the Alberta front end went over to the uh, head official out there. I don't know what they're discussing, but something's being discussed. Uh, probably something with the clock. Maybe there might have just been a little glitch or a little delay or whatever it might be. Sometimes it's uh, you know, the signal doesn't get relayed up quick enough and all kinds of stuff like that. The game's moving along pretty good, though. I don't expect any issues with the clock, so it won't be a big problem. So Delaney now staying with the shot he originally called. I assume it's a come around around that rock. I can't imagine why, how, what, you know, what the benefit of a freeze would be to the blue one. So I think it's come right around that. Maybe even if you have to go to the back of the forefoot to bury it or just off the forefoot. Whatever it takes to get it in there. I mean, one of the few curlers you see anymore throws with a glove on. I hadn't actually noticed that before. Uh, yes, I, I actually did notice that. I think it might be one of his teammates does that as well. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I know that the Saskatchewan skip does, but for the ladies. But. So the guys are sweeping this one. This looks pretty good if he's got enough speed to he's carry it by going. that top one, and he won't. It's not quite there. No. So struggles continue for Team Ontario. Alberta will probably remove this stone, even though it's only number three. You don't actually have to. Well, they're looking well, at they're talking about the drawing. Draw the forefoot. Yeah. Yeah, that's the call. Unless Ed lets Jim Walsh get all the way down there and changes his mind. <laughs> yeah, it surprised me a little bit. I, I know you have to worry a little bit about a jam, but, um, yeah, I guess this, it will make it harder probably for Ontario to score than if you just hit that one, but... Anyway, look which indicating to the sweepers, make sure they clean it on the way down the sheet. Oh, we saw a few picks in that women's game. Yeah, a couple this morning over at the, at the uh, Goose Cap Club. Jim Walsh will look to throw this top forefoot partially around that red stone and force Bruce Delaney probably to play a tap. No easy shot when you're, when you're struggling. No easy shot at the best of time, but certainly not when you're struggling. Sweeper's not doing much with this. Must be close for weight. Not working a little bit. It does have to curl. See Gord Durer try to make it curl a little bit. Looks like it's going to be T-line wide open to me, but maybe a little beyond the T-line. So Delaney now just will just come down to that. Four foot. Yeah. So Bruce Delaney now with the outturn draw. Looking to get Ontario on the board as we go to the break here at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters Curling Championship Men's Gold Medal Game. A game that we thought would be a real nail biter just has so far hasn't turned out that way just because Alberta's just playing so good. And Ontario's struggling a little bit. That's usually all it takes to, to have one game go a little bit one way. Just to add to the uh, tensions a little bit out here, they've, they've managed to put all the hardware out. They always do that at these big events. Put all the stuff out there for everybody, the curlers, to see. It's like, hey, guys, by the yeah. way, if you look at cheat one, that's what you're playing for. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So Bruce Delaney now. Biggest shot of the game, obviously. Absolutely has to make this one to really to make sure that this game is, uh, is close the rest of the way or has a chance to be close the rest of the way. Brian Henderson trying to make a curl. I think he's got it. It's got to come a long way yet, though. I'll tell you. Just rolls out, and I think we've got think steel of at least two. Two, maybe three. Three, I think. Wow, steel of three. Team Ontario down seven to nothing after four ends of play. Here at the Canadian Masters Curling Champ. Who would have ever saw that coming? I don't think anybody saw that coming. So we'll go to the break here. With Alberta leading 7-0 over Team, Al team Ontario. And this Ontario team, you just look at their facial expressions and their body language. They are not feeling the game right now. No, probably a little discussion about playing on at this point. But we'll take a break and we'll be right back with you either way.
we're back after the fourth end break here at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters men's gold medal game. It's been all Alberta so far, Kaylee. Yes, it has. That's been the story of the first half of this game. Yeah, certainly a surprise to us. We expect to come in here and have a, a real squeaker of an affair. And um, so far, Alberta playing very, very well. Ontario struggling, and you put those two together, and it just never, ever makes for a good game. So four ends to go. Ontario basically at the whole desperation stage at this point. Probably need to score three here to even, even continue playing, but certainly uh, to get back in the game. Bruce Delaney, skip of the team from Ontario. As we said before, lots of experience. I'm sure he's had lots of games before where he has been uh, trailing and had to find a way to win and certainly will not be rattled by the situation, although I'm sure not super happy with the situation. So Ontario will throw up a corner guard. You'll see a couple corner guards go up for Alberta and then we'll... They'll work on trying to get some things going and get some rocks behind them and maybe bump back the odd Alberta stone or so. And Gord Dewar, left-hander, lead for Team Alberta. Had a good game so far, as you mentioned. Sometimes you don't notice the leads, and if you don't notice them, it's usually because they're playing very well. It's usually because they're doing their jobs. Exactly, yep. Yeah. You notice when they're not playing well, though. Well, you absolutely do, and if you're a skipper, you know, if you have your own team and your lead is struggling a little bit, you know what we're talking about. It's, it's just very, very tough to play the game if your lead is not putting the rocks where you need them to be. Gord Dewar's done a good job of that today. Dave Stanley throwing up the other corner. Sweepers aren't touching it. This one, don't want this one in, and sure enough, it will stop. Rick Bashan just cleaning it a little bit. So Alberta now goes to the peel mode. Pretty standard. It's, it's interesting and curling. You don't usually have much variance from the, the style of play with a, when one team's ahead by a bunch. It, everybody pretty much plays the same game. Yeah, you're ahead by a bunch. You just hit everything in sight. <laughs> exactly, yep. Don Heyer playing the intern peel. Out it goes. And out goes the other one. Telling you, man, that guy has just been uh, been very, very good. That it left a corner guard, but but just barely a corner guard. I was so say it's uh it's over further further than the other one was, and it's Yeah, great shot for a, Don. Not a lot of real estate to hide behind that corner guard. Oh, you're right. It's interesting the way this team from Alberta has played these these peels. They've actually played them, you know, kind of going across the top from the outside. Outside in, it's sort of a little different way to play them. Usually you'll see guys will peel them on the outside and slash them across or just throw it down the, the center and, and come right into the stone. These guys just played a little different, but obviously look which knows the ice very, very well and the guys are hitting the sticks. So and when that happens, it doesn't really matter how you want to play them, you're going to make them. And here comes another one. Yep. This one might be a little different. Be interesting to see. He's going to hit it on that side. He's got a little bit of room. It looks pretty close there on the screen, but he does have a fair bit of room between the red and the blue, and he can hit a half a rock and not really have to worry about jamming it. So Don Heyer, another I'm peel attempt. They might need to sweep this one for curl. It's, it's a little out there. And does jam and it. And no, they go. Yeah, no real damage done. Fortunately for Ontario, that, that corner guard is just so far over, it's just very difficult to, to utilize. You can get maybe one behind it, but that would be all. So Delaney asking again for another corner guard, same side. Bruce probably thinking, well, if we can get one over there somewhere around the red one, if we ever get the right kind of a jam, we might be in better position than, than we were. So he'll get the dart. Brian Henderson will put the, put the guard up. 
And Alberta will go out and look to peel again. Jim Walsh having a look, trying to figure out. I'm not so sure he's trying to figure out as much as making the double other than making sure he doesn't roll something into the rings. Yeah, I think he was looking, okay, which one is more dangerous? Which one am I actually trying to peel? Yeah, sure, yep. And which one is just a casualty if it happens to get hit? <laughs> yeah. So look which, out of the hack. There's a little bit of, uh, I just noticed his uh, unconventional broom holding. He's got it so that the hair is down on the ice. It's almost like it's trying to slow him oh, down. Yeah. I, I didn't even, I didn't notice that myself. Yeah, that is rare. You very, very rarely see that. You usually see the wood or the plastic down. Yeah. You must put like very, very little pressure, if any, on the broom. It must just be laying there because that would, I think, cause you some pro problems if you were somebody that had a little extra weight down on that broom head. So Rick Bashan now playing that same come around, I think, that we saw a couple of hands ago with a rock that was at the, the top of the forefoot. This one's set up a little better if you do decide you want to come around, although maybe we're just throwing a guard. Looks like just a high guard. Those blue ones, though, Kaylee, are set up to, um, you know, so if you come around them, they're staggered in the right way for you. It would really be hard for the Alberta to remove yours. Without, I think so, yeah. yes. I'm not quite sure. I, I think you were right saying he called to come around, though, because really? that's, well, that's yeah. a center guard, and he has hammer. That doesn't really make sense to me. No. No, although, you know, sometimes you just say, well, we just keep moving around. We've got to move around somewhere. We're down 7 nothing. I don't know if we really care where the guards are. Let's try to figure out if we can put one somewhere they can't hit it. Well, I guess but that's you might true. be right. You might be right because uh, we were just talking with Coach Anderson here a minute ago, and, and he said that, you know, that Rick has struggled a little bit this week. So so maybe that's just a case of just not being real sharp with the draw weight. And actually, uh, Alberta just left them a corner guard. Yeah. There's, there's a gift. Yeah, so all of a sudden you do have something to work with, although you only have three stones left. This will be the same call. This time it will definitely be a come around, so they're definitely not trying to throw a guard on this shot. You need to find a way to make all three of these stones count. And the only way you're going to do that probably is coming around these two blues. Yeah. You've got to hide them for that to be work. Yeah. And the blues give you the luxury of, of possibly having one left there if somebody tries to peel it off. Whereas the other stones, once they peel it off, it's, it's going to be wide open. So Rick Bashan. He's not really going super hard on this. I don't know um, if this has got enough weight. Here it comes. There it is. Yes, it does have enough weight. Yeah, they need to keep going. They need to take this back a little bit further. There's a great There's shot. There's a lovely shot. A little bit open. So let's say it's about half to three quarters open. Yeah. It's the difference when you're going good and when you're going bad. Jim Walsh probably thinks that thing looks like it's just about wide open. If you're having a, a bit of a struggle out there, that thing looks almost totally buried. Another foot on that would have been would have been beautiful for Team Ontario. Yes, it would have been dead buried. But at least they have to think about it. So Jim Walsh, fourth thrower for Alberta now, settling into the hack, and he will try to just pick this one out. Every little bit of wigglies going on there in the delivery on that one. Got to go for line. He's tight to his own. Yeah, I think it's not the best of deliveries for Jim Walsh. Oh, yeah, he got his own up. There's a break that Ontario needed. Yeah, that's a big one. So now what do you do, Kaylee? Well, I think you try... I Honestly, I'd be trying to go around that corner, that poor little corner guard. Corner guard. Yeah. I think because you need three is the reason that they're going to stay with this plan and maybe sort of Christmas treeing it behind the blue one. Um, I'm not, not against your call either. It's, you know, he's going to play the same shot he just played, I think. So 
Maybe try to make it just a little bit tougher. If I only need a two, I think I'm going around one of those corners, I agree. But when you need three, I'm thinking that maybe, maybe you gotta hang with this shot one more time. You might pay the price, they might double something off, but. Actually, I think I just saw him uh, indicate he's looking for the freeze on the top blue one. Freeze on the top blue, okay. On, on the one in the uh, eight foot. Yeah. Well, that would probably maybe protect the back one a little bit. And, yeah, make it good enough. Maybe half a blue rock, three quarters of the blue. The guy's cleaning this one pretty good. Has to curl. We're standing up, not sure he's totally thrilled with it, but it looks not bad. So you gotta keep going. Keep going. Well, they're by it now, you might as well go ahead. So whatever he wanted, that's what he's got, and you know, you needed a break anyway, so you'll probably have a good shot at two here. I think Jim will be able to play the, the slash on his own. Onto the red and give Delaney the draw for two. And probably not quite as many as Ontario would need, but you know, you can't help it. You take what they give you. They made some good shots this end, and when the other team's playing all defense, it's hard to mount a lot of offense. So And in our women's game, Nova Scotia just stole one to go up one on uh, Saskatchewan's Merle Kopak. After five ends, that's a big steal in the fifth end. Now you're you're in a position where a little bit of a force is not a bad thing, and it'd be nice to steal one here as well if you're Margie Cutcliffe. Certainly a two-point lead playing seven without hammer would be nicer than tied up, but. So Alberta does remove that number two stone for Ontario. Ontario now will play the draw for two, and we shouldn't have too much trouble with this one since he just threw it. to make this one stay alive for one more end anyway. It really is tough, the old curling game. When you get behind a good team, it's, it's just tough to, to manufacture points. You have to be so good. You really just can't afford to miss anything. And usually if you're behind, it's because you've already been missing some shots. So it's, uh, you got to turn it around in a hurry. Well, and it's such a mental game. When you're down 7 nothing, you start doubting yourself and your abilities, even though you know that they're there somewhere. Yeah. And the draw for two coming into the T-line here. No problem at all for Bruce on that one. Team Ontario picks up two. Now trails 7-2 to two after five ends of play. The Alberta squad... Alberta, the Alberta cheerleaders are now renting out their pom-poms to Team Ontario. <laughs> so seven to two with three ends to go. Not the best situation for Ontario for sure. What do you think, Kaylee? Uh, it's not the best situation, but it's definitely less daunting than it was an end ago. Well, you're still playing anyway. That's a good thing. Remind everybody to make sure that you visit bellalliant.ca slash TV1 for the webcast and TV schedule as well as on-demand content. You can also get information on live events that are only available to Bell Alliant Fiber Op customers in Atlantic Canada on channels 1 and 401. Bell Alliant, there's more to love with Fiber Op. I need to go home and check that out because I've got Fiber Op delivered about, I don't know, maybe a three weeks or a month ago or so, and I haven't actually had time to look at that stuff, so... I'm going to have a peek at that when I get home. We got it about three or four weeks ago, and I know they've got the Mayflower-Dave Jones final game up there. Yeah, I saw it. It's, it's, yeah, that's, it's a little tough to get these games after the fact, so someday hopefully we can, we can make that available. And I know we have the games from the, the Provincials, but they're, they're all on one big massive file, and nobody's quite figured out how to make them available to people yet. So... So Ontario, absolute total offense now. They really won't even, probably would be surprised if they hit any blue stone at all in this end. If they hit it, they're just going to be hitting it very, very gently. 
Trying to move it around a little bit. And I wouldn't be surprised if they play the tight center guard now because that well, first one's so long. Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly the, the name of the game, the one long, one tight, and make it difficult to make the, the double peel without at least leaving your shooter there. Crystalini with the broom, holding the broom. He's yeah, not this is not going to help. You know what? Just a story of the day for Ontario here. That was uh, you know, not a shot you would expect to have too much trouble with. You do have two guards, and they are pretty even, so it's not. It's not the end of the world, but it would have been nice to get that around. Make sure you had two of them dead on the center. You don't want to have to go around and end up in a situation where they can still outdraw you. So Ed Lukowicz looking for a, a freeze of the one in the house. The guys are probably figuring, like, well, how do you expect us to get to there, Ed? Because <laughs> those two rocks are kind of right in the paths of where we'd have to go to get to there. So instead, they're going to come. Where are they going to do? Come, they're are going to throw it away. Oh, yep. Yeah, throwing well, it like, through. I was going to say the the options there. I'd say would be the peel, but with the four rock rule, I guess your other option is the tick shot. But those rocks aren't in awful positions. No. Well, it, yeah, one more rock before they can actually play the peel. So now the uh, the next shot, you can be sure that's what they're going to play. No matter where Bruce puts this one. So the same come around. Try to get it just out front of the Bell Alliant logo. Got something you can work with. Hard not to just feel like it doesn't matter where you put it right now, but you do still need to really think it out a little bit. Oh, yes. Rock, well, rock placement is very important. Yeah, it really is. Point. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're going to make, you're going to play anyway, you want to make good shots, put them in the best places, and give you the best opportunity. So this one on its way. And we'll see if he can sneak it by. Boys are just having a little struggle here. Get it by, and they do. So keep it moving. Try to make sure that this double peel becomes a little bit difficult. Wonderful shot. Yeah, good throw for Brian Henderson. And Luka Witch will ask, guess who, to play a double peel? Mr. Hire, your job is to peel. <laughs> exactly, yep. Don has had a lot of these today. And let's see how he makes out. He gets one, doesn't get the other one. And he just nicks the last Ontario stone that was thrown on his way by. Yeah, just a little touch. Brian Henderson with his second shot of this end. He's working on it a little bit. He's not going to get there. He will provide another guard, which maybe is not terrible. Three is still four rocks to come. Oh, they've got four guards up there now. Yeah, they got lots. And those two are pretty good. Unfortunately, they're also pretty close together, so they You're may both go here shortly. Yes. Ed's calling the double peel. Now, in that view, it looks like they might line up a little bit on a possible jam if you took it straight on the nose, but they can go over the top of it, I guess, play this one over the right-hand side of the redstone as we look at it here, or as we did look at it. Don Heyer in the hack. And the focus going. And he's on his way out. And 
Yeah, he gets just a one, but a good shot. Yep. Avoids the jam by just taking that top one. Yeah. So now Ontario has to make a little bit of a move, probably. Fortunately, when you're down this many, it's hard to, you, you got to have a little different mindset because you're, you're really, stealing one doesn't really do it. You need to, you need to steal two at least twice, and that's not easy at the best of times. So, but you always got to be thinking, okay, let's think about stealing one, but let's try to figure out how's that second one going to happen because you're going to have to do it somewhere a couple of times, and it might as well be now. You have two or three rocks to work with, and, you know, give it a go. So Rick Pashan go right through the hole. So oohs and ahs in the crowd as the Nova Scotia game gets a little bit tight over there and a pile of people over there watching it. So we will update you here in a little bit. So Ontario with the intern draw. We'll draw, maybe a little draw tap. Needs to move a little bit. Will he get it by that high one? Oh, he does. Not yet. Not yet. Oh. Unfortunate. Certainly no, not too heavy for weight. Just, uh, I have to believe maybe a little bit of a misread on the ice. Unless Rick did come a little wide. I'm not sure. But hard to tell that for us. And just, uh, just never really got there. Lukowicz looking down here trying to figure out, well, what the heck do we do now? We really don't want to play this kind of game. But we're kind of into it, so I guess we're going to go. Play the intern right around, right on top of his other stone. Maybe bump it a foot. You see what you mean now, Kaylee? The broom head down. Obviously not much weight on it. Nice slide. I'm actually a little surprised he's not playing the peel again. Playing what? The peel again. Yeah, I thought they might. I really did. I thought that uh, I thought they might. I guess they just figure there's just too many, and peeling one or two of them is not going to make a world of difference. But so we got a little split here, maybe. We do sets up a, maybe a pretty good situation for Ontario, though. Yeah, I think you can. You should be able to see all of that blue stone that. Uh, Ed just threw. So Ontario looking at this and trying to figure out, well, we could probably go through the hole, make the double, and roll it up behind the red guard. That would certainly be there. Make a, yeah, it could tap. Keep showing us the options, Bruce. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So I think that's what he's going to play. Just tap that blue one back a little bit, roll over in front of the blue. You're going to have to tap it far enough that your next shot, though, that you're going to be able to sit two, I think. Yeah, you want to probably tap to the back eight foot, I think. Yeah. You see Rick does, you're right. Rick throws with the glove on as well. Really surprised. I just not used to seeing guys throw with the glove on. Years ago, we had a few more guys throw with the glove on, but... Guys nice sweeping hard on this. Trying to get to force the curl here. <coughs> we almost squeaked through that hole. That was a little scary. Yeah. Need to just hit a little thicker. As it is, I think it's probably wide open. And it is. So Ontario just, just can't get anything mounted here. Can't get any offense going at all. And... You know, they're real close. That was really close. A little tiny bit more weight. Another inch of curl, and he's good. But instead, look at what's going to play. Basically an open hit. Makes it. No problem at all. 
I think he might have buried it too, so. I'd assume that um, Bruce is gonna play a draw of some sort. Yeah, that, that one rolled to a perfect spot for Alberta. It's gonna be, uh, gonna be really difficult to, to do much here. I assume you have to go around the red one, I guess. Go around the red and... I think so. Get yourself maybe half of the three quarters of the forefoot. I mean, the, both of those uh, Alberta stones are just biting the forefoot, so yeah. you don't you don't need a lot of the forefoot. You just need more than the Alberta stones. On its way. That's more than Actually, draw weight, is it not? Yeah, there was a change in the call here. Obviously, he's playing some sort of a little tap and roll. Might roll it right behind the guard. Makes the double. So and he is shot stone. He is shot, yep. Today, that probably counts for something. So it's not maybe a whole heck of a lot. Team Nova Scotia looking at three over there in the sixth end with Margie Cutcliffe's last rock and Saskatchewan having hammer. All this time I thought those Alberta girls were from Alberta. It turns out they're just part of the Rent-A-Fan system here in Nova Scotia. Now they got the Nova Scotia flags out, so we can use a little bit of help, I'm sure, as Mark Cutcliffe looks at, looking at three here. And Ed Lukowicz holding the broom for Jim Walsh, looking at one. Got the out turn hit. Just make that one go away, and he'll be pretty happy. Like a pretty good release by Jim. Don Heyer working on it. Both guys working on it right now. Not sure if they want it to curl or don't want it to curl, but we'll I find think they're out. They're going the old school sweep system. Have everybody sweep. Yep, good idea. Will he get it out? No, so he doesn't get it out. So Ontario at least with a chance to sit two and put one behind a guard. That's, uh, you know, at this point you take all you can and that might be all they have. Nova Scotia is looking at giving up a few there. So Delaney now will try to play the little intern hit, flop behind the red guard, sit two, and and just you know force Jim Walsh to throw one again, looking at two, which. As I said, that's pretty much all you can do sometimes. And he's just going to oh, roll a little, a little too far. far again. And right even roll. Nope, stays for, maybe stays for shot, second I shot. I think he's second shot. But. I don't think it'll matter. I think Jim Walsh will play a, just hit that right in between the two reds and see what happens. Or does he just say, I'm going to draw. Take my, take my one and yeah. run. Yeah. I guess it probably depends if they're sitting one or sitting two and, and how much room there is behind that blue. I don't know if he can blast that out or not. Comes up, hits it on the nose, not a bad thing. With, this, with a five point lead, it's just, it's really, playing a draw is a tough, tough to do at that point. Nova Scotia just gave up three, so they're down two, playing the seventh end. That was the first multi-point end of that woman's game. 
And it was a big one, actually. Nova Scotia lucky to only give up three, I think. Yes, she had a shot for uh, four there and just came out a little heavy. Ontario stole one. So Ontario steals one, I believe, here in the sixth end of our game. Gold medal game at the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters Curling Championship. Which we're already discussing a little bit, but, you know, it's at the end of the day, you're up four with two ends to go and hammer. I, I don't think you want anybody getting too upset. So Ontario trying to claw their way back here. Still a very long way to go, but. Ontario boys looking a little bit upset about something. I can't quite figure out what it would be, but. Anyway, look at what's having a little chat with him. Certainly an experienced veteran. I'm sure he'll he'll bring a little uh, common sense back to the thing here and a little sanity back. Yeah, to his a little team. sanity back to the chicken <laughs> coop or something. Yeah, boys are playing well. I mean, it you know that didn't work out there, but just the same. Nice thing about the Masters is they when they miss, there's no broom slamming. Yeah. Well, the game is still still. Pretty well under control for Team Alberta. So unfortunately for Ontario, their first shot of the end slid into the house, which is uh, not good. Alberta will look to remove it. So good shot for Alberta League Gord Dewar. Bruce Delaney now will ask his lead, Dave Stanley, to put this one anywhere but in the house, basically, right on the center line, somewhere up front. You need to make these all the time, and hopefully you can work something around and find a way to come up with a couple on this end. see quite often in games like this or you know when a team gets out to a big lead and you know okay the team claws back they get a little single here or single there and you know the idea here is just to make sure you guard against the big end and, and occasionally you end up giving up the odd little steal one or one somewhere along the way and it's just what happens so there's no point getting too uh too upset over it Albert in pretty good shape here Gord Dewar now, not able to remove that rock yet, so he'll play another draw. It's making sure they know where to be. I think it's all at the T-line on its own, or close to it. Yeah. So Bruce calling another guard. Like this one to be higher, like line it up with the red. Alberta can play the peel now, but if you can put them dead in line, there's a pretty good opportunity that, or a pretty good possibility that they won't remove them both at least in one shot if you've got some decent separation. Sure, he's not going to get to the center line, but it is up front. I don't know what happened there. That looked like probably the weight, weight, the correct weight. 
It's guarding the uh, Alberta stone more than anything. Yeah. And they're just going to peel it. Don Heyer playing another peel. So he's done pretty much all day long. He'll try to, might try to get both reds on this one. Sort of half-hearted try probably. You want to make sure you roll out. Yep, so that's what they do. They roll out first, and if everything had lined up correctly, they get this one in the back. Otherwise, not so much. This one's gonna get closer to that center line. Yeah, that's a better shot. It's basically exactly where they wanted the last one. So Alberta will try to make it. They're probably just gonna play the single peel, yeah. Sometimes you get yourself in trouble when you try those double peels, you end up running it straight back and all of a sudden there's still two out there and, and now the other team's throwing. On higher with the delivery, you can see the crowd down out you go. Perfect shot. It's no good throw. With this game on, every now and then we hear a big reaction in the crowd. We're not quite sure what happened. Oh, I, I saw what happened. Okay. <laughs> I, I happened to witness that. Uh, the Nova Scotia second had made a lovely come around, and for the second shot in a row, the Saskatchewan, I must have been their second, um, made a perfect run back. Wow. So Rick Bashan now, throwing a similar shot, another guard out front, preferably lined up with that one that's already there. It's gonna be a little bit deep probably. Yeah, quite deep. So unfortunately now, the Alberta squad certainly has the possibility of getting rid of everything. Boy, switching the rocks, or the rocks, switching the brooms around a little bit. Just trying to figure out, I don't know which one they do here. I don't know if you picked the, the, the best broom for the inside sweeper or the outside sweeper, but I'm assuming the inside sweeper on a takeout. Hey, Lugovic with a little extra weight there. Set her back to the broom a little bit. Might only get one here. He does. It's just a little set on it. Fast Eddie just kind of moved her back a little bit. Probably just a little bit of a tight slide, so I got to make sure I hit something. Got it back there. And one of them's gone. So Delaney, now, not a lot of options now. Gonna play the freeze on the blue. Yeah. It's like Team Saskatchewan playing very well in that game against Nova Scotia, certainly in this end. Lots of Saskatchewan stones as Mark Cutcliffe tries to go after her deuce in the seventh end, trailing five to three after six. Ontario playing the freeze here. It's going to be gonna bump it. Yeah, a little bit of a bump. Pretty nice effort, though. Pretty nice effort. Jim Walsh indicating how far apart they are and making sure everybody's on the same page with shot selection here. And he'll ask Lukowicz now to throw the intern. Pick that out. Probably pick it out would be preferred, but. Even if it removes your own stone, not the end of the world for sure. And I think he's pretty good. No, I think he's just picking it. Yep. And he might. Boy, sit. the Alberta team has played well here today. I can't. You can't take it. For yep. They really haven't had very many misses. He even managed to stay in the house on that one. Yeah.
So Delaney now will play the intern. Oh, maybe not. Changed it up a little bit. So now he's going to play an outturn tap, try to tap this rock. Now, if, if they try to tap it on the side they said, they'll actually be trying to tap this just behind the button so that they can play the freeze on the next shot and steal their single point. The other possibility would be to just to tap it a little bit inside where you where your rock on the inside flop maybe partially behind the guard set that one up at the back of the forefoot either way we'll see what he does here and well his team's doing the it's up weight signal again yeah you know what i i noticed yesterday in the game with brian henderson he indicates that sometimes and it's a bit i i think as a skip i would find it really troublesome if, if you're going to tell me it's real heavy then make sure it's real heavy you know <laughs> And that's kind of what he does a little bit on that. I find that a little bit. But, you know, he these guys. panics a little bit. Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're thinking, uh-oh. But, anyway, no big deal. They probably know exactly, and they probably understand everybody's uh, little intricacies. Intrici What's the word? Intricacies. intricacies. Yeah. <laughs> intricacies. <laughs> Intricate something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, good shot there by Delaney. That's uh, just about exactly what he wanted, I think. And, you know, Little bump, they pick this one out. You play the perfect freeze and maybe steal one. The other part is, I suppose, Alberta could pick this out and try to catch their blue one on the way by. And then there's nothing to freeze to. Yeah. Just don't want to jam it if you're Team Alberta. I don't expect that'll happen. I think you'll throw this one firm enough that... That probably won't be the case. There's a bit of ton of weight on it. Guys are working on it, trying to make it curl. Still got I a don't move. think he's going to no, touch he's it. He's got air. Yeah. Jim. Jim making some sort of symbol or signal with his hand. I don't know what that means exactly, but. I wondered if it was a hand cramp because it was his throwing hand, or yeah, sorry, his, his broom hand yeah. he did it with. <laughs> what do we got here, Kaylee? What's he have to do? Ontario has to make the little bump bump? Little bump bump or a baby, well, no, he can't come around that. So, yeah, I well, think he's got the bump bump. I think, yeah, not, again, it's another opportunity. You have a chance to sit two. I think you need to do it. You're down, down four, so... You got to take advantage of the the possibility you could get another miss and steal two. Stealing one's not going to cut it. More likely, I don't remember the last time I saw a steal of three in the last end. So Delaney looking to bump this, not hard, just enough so that he's sitting two when he's done. Yeah. Was Brian Henderson trying too. to make a curl? There it comes. Needs to move a little more. He's got to curl a long way. That's not going to do a whole lot. And rolls out even. Wow. So not a good shot there by Bruce Delaney. Certainly not a shot that you'd expect player of his caliber. That was, that was, uh, you know, hack weight. I'm sure, and I don't think that you're really looking for hack weight there. And Alberta probably with a chance to end the game here. Ed's going to have a little chat with Jim. Make sure he's feeling good about it. The best player in the world. Tell him that the last miss was an anomaly and the miss before yeah. it was too. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to say, remember that last miss? Don't do that again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Throw this one better. All that positive thinking stuff. It's all good. So he's got a lot of ice, though. By that, he's going to have to be fairly light. Anytime you start throwing fairly light, who knows? That red one comes into play at the front. I thought he might go at this a little harder, actually. He threw a, a couple of pretty good firm shots earlier. Might have a little bit, but oh, he looks okay. Don higher on it, trying to make a curl, and it's looking pretty good. Looking really good. Yeah, he's and got it. And that's Jim Walsh removes the blue, and that's stone. the game. Alberta picks up three. Defeating Team Ontario 10-3 here at the gold medal game of the 2016 Kings County Canadian Masters at the 
Wolfville Curling Club. Great effort by Team Alberta today, Kaylee. Oh yes, Alberta definitely came out to play and Ontario just came out a little. Yeah, really, really solid game by the guys from Alberta. And, and yeah, Ontario by far didn't have their best effort, no question about that. But congratulations for sure to Team Alberta. It's been a pleasure to be here this week. I'm Jim Nix. I'm here with Kaylee McLean. I'll say thanks to Scott and, and Chuck in the booth, those guys started making these broadcasts possible. Congratulations once again to Team Alberta, and we'll see you again next year.